Hello students, welcome to Aditya Academy. I am Dr. Ragini Aroda and today we are going to start 6th chapter from the NCRT book which is Similar Triangles. In this video, we are going to learn about the concept of similarity, the basic requirements to prove two triangles similar. Moreover, we will be doing two theorems from this chapter. So now if we talk about similarity, in a layman's term, so when we talk about mathematics, Euclidean geometry says two objects are similar if they have the same shape. Right? Now here it is talking about shape only, not size. Or one has the same shape as the mirror image of the other. Right? Shape is same whether we compare one object with the other object or we compare one object with the mirror image of the second object. So they look alike. Their shapes are same, but their sizes are different. So let me explain you. If we take a circle, circle has one parameter, radius. Now if we take another circle, which also has some other radius, which is R2. Now can you say these are similar or not? Yes, they are because their shapes are same. They are similar. The only thing is the difference is in their radii. Their radii are different but their shapes are same. So, we call them similar circles here. Right? Now, if we come to another figure, this is a polygon. Polygon is square. Now, what is a square? A parallelogram with all the sides equal and all the angles are 90 degree. Now, let's say this square has a side of 5 centimeter. And now, if I make another square of side 8 centimeter. So, now can we say they are similar? Yes, because their shapes are exactly same. You can see that if all the sides of this figure are equal, here they are also equal. The basic thing is their angles are equal. All the four angles of square 1 are equal to all the angles of square 2. So this is a basic requirement of similarity. If the angles of one figure, if it, we are talking about uh, polygons, polygons have inclination between their sides. If I am talking about a pentagon, now I can make So, if their angles are same, if their angles are same but sizes may differ, then even they are similar. So, the basic requirement of similarity in polygons is they should have same angles and their sides may be proportional. Right? Now, here comes a practice thing. This is a quadrilateral ABCD. What is a quadrilateral? A polygon with four sides. A polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral. So we have four sides and four angles in this polygon. Right? I told you two, for two polygons to be similar, their angles should be same. Now if you compare in ABCD, angle A, can you check angle A is 105? So this. Angle P is 105. Next, angle B is 100. Angle Q is also 100. In this, angle C is 70, which is equal to angle R in PQRS. Angle D is equal to angle S. So, the basic requirement for two polygons to be similar has been met. Now, Check about the sides. AB is 1.5. AB is 1.5 and PQ is 3. You can say that this is twice of AB. PQ is twice of AB. Now, what about uh, BC is 2.5. Then QR is, QR is 5. Again, this is 2 times. CD is 2.4. 
rs is 4.8 this is two times then da is 2.1 and sp is 4.2 right so you can see that all the four sides of the second quadrilateral are two times of the respective sides of quadrilateral abcd so this is how we check the similarity of two polygons that means angles have to be exactly same so that the shape remains same they are sides are inclined at the same angles to each other but the sides can the sides have to be in a fixed ratio that means the sides of one polygon should be a fixed constant times the side of the other polygon then we say that here quadrilateral abcd is similar to quadrilateral pqrs right next is here we have to compare check whether these two polygons are similar or not now see this is abcd seems to be a square all the sides are equal now see here ab is 2.1 and ab can be compared see in similarity it is not required like if i keep a triangle like this right and and i make another triangle like this so they may be similar though if abc is this order and pqr is some other order let it be pqr i can i can move this like this i can keep this q over a it may overlap like this doesn't matter if the order of the name of the triangle is in the same order as like abc are in alphabetical order it doesn't matter we have to take pqr only it may be qrp it may be rqp it may be pqr whatever but the only thing is the one triangle when may be made some made in some other sense like abc is in the proper order with the base as bc doesn't need that it should be qr at the bottom and p at the top and they should be in the proper order doesn't matter you have to look for the proportionality of sides and equality of angles while making two figures similar right we will be doing this in detail now if ab is 2.1 i may take pq because all the sides are equal in this polygon moreover in this polygon so all the sides are two times we can see that 2.1 4.2 2.1 4.2 so the one condition is met that the sides of the second polygon are two times sides of like pq is two times ab or qr is two times bc and so on but the thing is you can see that these angles the angles between the sides here they are 90 and here they are not because the tilt between the sides is not same so you can say that sides may be proportional in this case but the inclination the angles are not equal so these are not similar these figures are not similar both the uh, both the properties both the requirements have to be met for the checking of similarity next is now the, we are talking about the similarity of triangles because the chapter is about triangles only similarity of triangles two polygons of the same number of sides are similar are similar if their corresponding angles are equal a b c p q r if i write this as 30 this as 70 this becomes 80 so this has to be 30 this to be 70 this to be 80 if we have to write these two triangles to be similar so two polygons of the same number of sides are similar if their corresponding angles are equal and their corresponding sides are in the same ratio or they are in proportion 
right so if i write triangle abc here you have to be very careful if we are talking about similarity we have to look for the corresponding parts of one figure with the other figure like if i write triangle abc is similar to triangle c what point is overlapping a what angle is exactly equal to angle a it's p so at if a is at the first position in this order of triangle i have to keep p in the same position a is occurring at the first place p has to be at the same position while we are writing the name of the second triangle now if b is the letter at the second place so what is the angle which is b equal to b is 70 q is 70 so q has to be here right it is not the case i am telling again and again that you have to maintain the alphabetical order for naming the triangles you always have to look for the equal angles like b is equal to q so when b is placed in the middle of these two letters q has to be there in the middle now angle c is equal to at which is equal to angle r in the second figure so here we can say triangle abc is similar to triangle pqr this order may be this or it can be qpr it can be rpq rqp or anything rqp or rpq but you have to look for the corresponding equal parts only then write the names of the triangles right similarity of circles i have already told you like circles are similar because their shapes are always same and they have only one parameter like this is r1 this is r2 so they are similar because there there are no angles in this figure so we can say that all circles are similar to one another because they are only separated by the radii which is their parameter now we come to theorem 6.1 in ncert the first exercise the second exercise about thales theorem or basic proportionality theorem this theorem is also called thales theorem right the statement says if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle to intersect the other two sides in distinct points the other two sides are divided in the same ratio since this is a long theorem i am uh, just writing the what basic things here whenever you have to do a geometry question your presentation your steps should be very clear because generally children don't write what is required in the question this is also called thales theorem statement says if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle so let me explain this if this is a triangle right abc a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle let's say i am drawing be parallel to bc so the first thing given thing is done intersects intersecting two sides two other sides at two distinct points so d and e are those two distinct points which we get when d e is drawn parallel to bc then this is the proof part the other two sides are divided in the same ratio this you have to prove like when d e is drawn parallel to bc we have drawn one line parallel to one side of triangle so it means the other two sides ab and ac in d and e respectively right now we have to prove that it divides or the two sides are divided in the same ratio that means the ratio of these intercepts or parts ad upon bd is equal to the intercepts on the other two sides ae upon ce this is the part which has to be proved in this theorem so go very basic in the basic manner go step by step try to learn the language what he is asking in the question 
So in geometry question or theorems especially, what you have to do is write what is given in the question. Given is, since we are talking about a triangle, you can say given triangle ABC in which, what is given that? It is given that one side has been drawn parallel to one side. So now you can choose in your figure, you can choose that you have drawn DE parallel to BC in which DE is parallel to BC. Right? So the given thing is noticed that D and E are the points on AB and AC respectively. Now what we have to prove? To prove that these two sides AB and AC are being divided in the same ratio. That means AD upon BD is equal to AE upon CE. This you have to prove. And then here in this theorem, you have to learn that what construction you have to do. To prove this theorem, you have to make some constructions in the given. So what we have to do is draw, draw DM perpendicular to hold AC. And see, this DM is perpendicular to DM is perpendicular to, you have to draw it here, DM is perpendicular to AC and this EN, in this figure I am not marking because then it becomes difficult to read, EN is perpendicular to whole AB, this whole AB, draw EN perpendicular to whole AB, then join, join BE and CD. B, E and C, D. One more thing. If we are doing some constructions in a geometrical questions, those constructions that we are doing, they are not given in the question, they should be done with dotted lines. These dotted lines are all those things that we have made those constructions to prove our theorem. I hope this is clear. This is given part. This you have to prove and this is construction that we have done. So, when figure is given or only statement is given, the very first thing is to draw the figure accurately, write these three steps and then comes the proving part. So, now I have kept this figure also. Now, start proving. One more thing, there is a theorem which was earlier in uh, syllabus of class 9. Now, it has been removed for the last two years. Let me explain this. We will be using that if two triangles are drawn on the same base, right? If two triangles are drawn on the same base between two parallel lines, let's say this is AB and this is CD. AB is parallel to CD. Now this triangle ABD has base on AB. A, B, D, triangle A, B, D and this other triangle C, A, B, C, A, B, triangle C, A, B, right? Triangle D, A, B, A, D, B and C, A, B, they are triangles on the same base and between the same parallels. They are, their height for the, both the triangles is same. You can put perpendiculars, they will be same because they are made inside two parallel lines. So, the distance between these two parallel lines is same, hence their heights are same and moreover they have the same base. So, if we calculate the area of triangle DAB, it is half AB into DL and for CAB, it is half AB into CM. AB is equal to AB, DL is equal to CM. So, area of these two triangles are same. We will be using this result, so I am explaining it in the beginning. Now see, what we have to do is write the figure area of triangle A, D, E over area of triangle B, 
d e this you have to learn how you have to prove this theorem take take this triangle a d e at the top and from this side take the lower triangle which is b d e now how can we find the area of this triangle this is half base into height you can see that let me rub this see if this is the triangle okay i'm just drawing which is required now look at this triangle a d e area of triangle can be calculated by treating one side as base and getting the altitude for that base now if i take ad as base the altitude for this triangle becomes en so area can be written as half ad into en half ad into en divided by we have to calculate area of triangle b d b d e now one more thing if we have one obtuse triangle right and this is let this be a b c if we have to calculate the area of this obtuse triangle how can we do that if we have to take b c as the base where will the altitude fall if we draw a perpendicular this perpendicular falls outside the triangle for an obtuse angled triangle so just try to look at this if we have to take bd as base bd as base then e is the vertex at the top from this if you draw a perpendicular en becomes the height take bd as base then en can be treated as the altitude for this triangle right so in case of obtuse triangle the altitude always falls outside the triangle right so this says half of for this triangle bde if we take bd as base the height can be treated as en itself right so if you simplify this you get this en en reduced which is equal to ad over bd which is equation 1 now similarly look for the same ratio on the right hand side area of triangle adde over area of triangle ade over dce dce you have to treat the same way on the rhs if we treat ae as base the height has to come from the vertex d so this should be dm dm is a perpendicular from d on whole side ac so if we treat treat ae as the base dm becomes the height area of triangle ade remains same we have three different pairs of base and height so we are taking two in this case ad and en as one pair ae and dm as the second pair a for base ae the height becomes dm and now similarly if we take this triangle cde this is again a obtuse an obtuse triangle so obtuse triangle the perpendicular or the altitude falls outside so if for triangle dce i am treating ce as the base height becomes dm so if we simplify this we get ae upon ce this is our second equation now what we had to prove ad upon bd see here ad upon bd a upon c right so we have already got the rhs ad upon bd a upon c the only thing is we need to prove them equal 
right? So, how can we prove them equal? Try to make a relationship between the LHS of these two equations, right? So, see, ADE and ADE, the numerators of the LHS are already equal. Both are the area of triangle ADE. Now, if we talk about area of triangle BDE and CDE, see here, BDE. BDE is this triangle, right? And CDE is this triangle. Now, can you see? DE is the base for both the triangles, BDE and CDE. They are made by their vertices downward, like BDE having base DE and this CDE having base DE. Moreover, their vertices are between the two parallel sides DE and BC. DE and BC are parallel. This is given in the question. DE is drawn parallel to BC. So again, we can say that taking DE as base, these two triangles have been drawn between two parallel sides. So we can use that theorem. Triangles on the same base and between the same parallels are equal in area. Now, area of Triangle ADE is equal to area of triangle ADE. The numerators are already equal. And we can write area of triangle BDE is equal to area of triangle CDE. Here you have to write the reason. Triangles on the same base, on the same base and between the same parallels, between the same parallels are equal in area, are equal in area, right? So, we can say that area of triangle ADE upon area of triangle BDE. Is equal to area of triangle ADE upon area of triangle CDE. So the LHS of both the equations now have become equal. So their RHS also become equal. So we write AD upon BD is equal to AE upon CE. Hence proved. Right? This is very important theorem. You will be having questions from this theorem definitely in your paper. Next is the converse of this theorem. Converse means in this it is given that if a line divides the two sides of triangle in the same ratio. Now this is given part. If a line divides the two opposite sides in the same ratio then prove that the line is parallel to the third side, right? So, the given thing is, here we are given triangle ABC in which, in which, ABC in which, this is given that the sides are proportional like AD upon BD is equal to AE upon CE. So, this DE, line DE is dividing AB and AC in the same ratio. This is given to us. What we have to prove is, we have to prove that DE is parallel to BC. Right? So, uh, in construction, draw another line DE dash meeting AC in E dash, right? So, what we have to do is, it is given that AD upon BD is equal to AE upon C. We have to prove that DE will be parallel to BC. So, this, now what I am going to do is called contradictory proof. We had done this in um, polynomials chapter also, where we had to prove root 2, root 3, uh, irrational. So, if this is called contradictory proof. That means we have to assume something 
which is which is actually not true and then we have to prove it wrong so this is called contradictory proof like if i have to prove de parallel to bc i am assuming that let it not be parallel proof let us assume let us assume that de is not parallel to bc right we are assuming that de is parallel to not parallel to bc this is a kind of, this kind of proofs are called contradictory proofs we assume something in the beginning the opposite of that what we have to prove we have to prove de parallel to bc so we are assuming that let de is not parallel to bc now we will prove ourselves wrong right let us assume that de is not parallel to bc right so let let there be a line de dash which is parallel to bc now we, that means if de is not parallel to bc we can have some other line de dash which is parallel to bc so now in triangle in triangle abc de dash is parallel to bc by construction right so we can say that ad upon bd is equal to ae dash upon ce dash by bpt in the previous theorem which is called basic proportionality theorem or thales theorem we have learned that this is this is a theorem we can use its results anywhere so if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle so by construction de dash is parallel to bc this is parallel to bc so that means this line divides the opposite side in the same ratio so i have taken this right this is parallel ae dash is parallel to ce dash right this i have done by using bpt in the given triangle but given that but given that ad upon bd is equal to ae upon ce that is given let this be first equation let this be second equation so if we compare these two equations their lhs of both the equations are same that means their lhs have to be same from 1 and 2 we can say ae dash upon ce dash is equal to ae upon ce now what are they ae dash is this part ae dash is this part a dash upon c e dash is equal to a e upon c e how can this be possible e dash and e are two points on ac so how can this be equal a dash will be having some other measurement because e and e dash are not same so they will be having some different measurement so how can these two parts be same if these are two distinct points actually this is not possible that is why we can write here that this is only possible only possible if e and e dash coincide we cannot say let's say that this is a b c and let this be d we cannot say ac is equal to ad if they are two distinct points how can their measurement be equal not at all They, if they have to be equal, that means C and D should be the same point. They should be coinciding. So that is why this is only possible if E and E dash coincide. That means our assumption is wrong. We cannot have assumption is wrong. We cannot have. We cannot have two parallel lines. 
two parallel lines through one point. That means D is the given point. D is the given point. We cannot draw two parallel lines through D, which is DE and DE dash. This is not possible. We can have only one parallel line through one point. Two parallel lines through one point. So, our assumption is wrong and hence we can say that DE is parallel to BC. DE is parallel to BC. So, we have proved the converse of this theorem. Now, this is the example from NCRT. How we use the BPT and its converse. It says if a line intersects sides AB and AC of triangle ABC at D and E respectively and is parallel to BC, prove that AD upon AB is equal to AE upon e AC. See, this statement is exactly the same as that of basic proportionality theorem. The only difference is here the concept of taking ratios is bit different. They have taken AD over whole AB and AE over AC. Instead of AD upon BD and AE upon CE, the ratio is AD upon AB and AE upon AC. So this is very easy thing. Ratios can be taken in different orders. The only thing is uniformity has to be maintained on both the sides. Whatever way you are taking, like in LHS, it's AD over AB. I, I have taken the upper part over the whole side. And here also you have to take the upper part over the whole side. Right? So what we can do is only the different ways of ratio has to be learnt. See, AD over AB. What, first of all, you write given. Given is triangle ABC in which they have given DE is parallel to BC. What we have to prove is, what we have to prove is AD over AB is equal to AE over AC. Right, so I am starting proof here. AD over AB. Sorry. We start with the with applying BPT over here. Right. So in triangle, now we have applied BPT, BPT in the given triangle. So see, what is required you have to keep in your mind. We require AD and A in the ratio. And that means BD and C are not required. Instead, we have AB and AC in the denominator. So not to disturb AD, I am first flipping the ratios. BD over AD, CE over AE. Right? I have just taken the reciprocals on both the sides. If we are performing the same action on both the sides of the uh, equation, it doesn't disturb the equation. So the ratio has been flipped. Now what I am doing is add 1 to both sides. Add 1 to both sides. Right? So that becomes BD by AD plus 1 and CE by AE plus 1. Now take the LCM. Here you have AD. AD divided by AD is 1. 1 multiplied by BD becomes BD. Denominator is 1. AD divided by 1 is AD. Multiplied by 1, AD. A in the denominator, A divided by A 1 multiplied by CE becomes CE. And 1. A divided by 1 is A multiplied by 1 becomes A E. What is B D plus A D? B D B D plus A D. B D plus A D is this whole A B. Right? So A B over A D. C E plus A. C E plus A is whole A C. A C over 
A, E. Right? Now we have got this. A, B and A, C were required as a whole sides. We have got this, but the requirement is the reciprocals of these. So we again fit this. A, D over A, B is equal to A, E over A, C. This was the result which we were required. Right? So we have proved. Next example is now here ABCD is a trapezium and AB is parallel to DC. E and F are points on non parallel sides AD and BC respectively such that EF is parallel to AB. So given information says ABCD is a trapezium is a trapezium in which AB is parallel to DC and also it is given that EF is parallel to AB. EF is parallel to AB. This is given to us. Now we have to prove AE upon ED. AE upon ED is equal to this side. This side. AE upon ED is equal to BF upon FC. Right? So, to do this, we have to do some construction. Right? In this figure, since we cannot apply, this is the case of parallel sides, but we cannot apply basic proportionality theorem in some quadrilateral. It is meant for a triangle. So, we have to bring triangles into the figure. So, what I am doing is, I am joining AC. Join AC. Now, you can see that you have got two different triangles, ADC and ABC. So, now we start our proof. What is required? Always keep this in mind. AE over AD. AE over AD. AE over AD is... The ratio of this sides, this side, A over E D, B F over F C is this side. So try to learn this thing. We have drawn A C as the side, and we will be taking let this be M point M. So what we can do is we can take B P T in triangle A D C. We will get something about A M and M C. And similarly, if we Take BPT in triangle ABC. We will get sides of this BF and FC in terms of AM and MC. We can equate the center middle line and get the ratio in both the triangles which is required. So what we do is in triangle ABC, what is required? One side should be drawn parallel to one side of triangle. So here EM is EM is parallel to DC. Why? You can say that from this. AB is parallel to DC and EF is parallel to EB. So you can write AB is parallel to DC is parallel to EF. That means if AB is parallel to DC and AB is parallel to EF, that means all the three sides are parallel to each other. And here now, since EF is parallel to DC, EM is a fraction of that EF. So EM is parallel to DC. What we can say is AE upon DE is equal to AM upon MC by BPT. By BPT. This is our first equation. I have simply used basic proportionality theorem in this triangle. Because EF is given parallel to whole DC and EM is a fraction, the same part, line segment of part of EF. So now we have AD upon is equal to AM upon MC. Now in triangle CAB, try to look it downwards. CAB, CAB or CBA, C is a vertex and you can say MF is parallel to AB. Since all the three sides are parallel, 
we are talking about the fractions of this line segment EF being MF. MF is parallel to AB. So I can apply BPT in this figure. That means now I am taking ratio in the reverse order. See here we have AM over MC. So what I am doing is AM over MC is equal to BF over FC. Instead of taking like CF upon BF is CM because we already have AM upon CM. We have to equate this thing, remove this thing. So I am taking AM upon CM. The order should be maintained on the both the sides. So if I am taking AM upon CM, it is BF upon CF. BF upon CF by BPT. BPT. This is our second equation. Right? So now from 1 and 2, from equation 1 and equation 2, what is common? AM upon MC is there on both in both the equations. So AM upon MC is equal to AE upon B. AM upon MC is equal to BF upon CF. From 1 and 2, equating AM upon CM, we get AE upon BE is equal to BF upon CF. This is what we have to prove. Right? Next is, in this given that PS upon SQ, PS upon PS upon SQ is equal to PT upon TR. So this is given that the ratio of the two parts of LHS or the right left hand side PQ is equal to the ratio of two parts of PR. What we have to do is add angle PST. This is equal to angle PRQ. Prove that PQR is an isosceles triangle. So we are given that given triangle PQR in which in which PS upon SQ is equal to PT upon TR and angle PST is equal to angle PRQ. These things are given to us. What we have to prove is to prove that PQR is an isosceles triangle or you can say PQ is equal to QR. Two sides have to be proved equal. So this is the required thing. PQ is equal to QR. Now what we can do is in triangle PQR, what we had learned from the converse of BPT. Here we are given that PS upon SQ is equal to PT upon TR. Right? Given. So, the converse of PPT says that if the, op the sides, if one line divides the opposite side in the same ratio, that side is parallel to the third side. So, you can write by converse of BPT, by converse of BPT, ST becomes parallel to QR. So, now we have proved that. <laughs> So, by converse of BPT, ST is parallel to QR. Now, we are given that this angle is equal to this angle. That was given in the question. But since we have proved ST parallel to QR, we can say that angle PST is equal to angle PQR. Corresponding angles. They are in the position of corresponding angles. And if lines are parallel, corresponding angles are equal. So what we have given? PST is equal to PQR. But given that angle PST is equal to angle PRQ, it was given to us. So if we combine these two things, 
what happens? PST is equal to both. That means they themselves are equal. Implies that angle PQR is equal to angle PRQ. PQR is equal to PQR. This angle is equal to PRQ. And we know that if in a triangle two angles are equal, then the sides opposite to these two angles are equal. If these two base angles are equal, then their sides are also equal. So we can say that implies that PQ is equal to PR. Implies that triangle PQR is isosceles. Isosceles. Right? So these were the two theorems and three examples which are uh, before exercise 6.2. Now we are going to learn about the different criteria to prove two triangles similar. As we have learnt congruency in class 9 and in class 7 also. So now we are going to learn about the similarity. There are three different criteria to prove two triangles similar. The first one is SSS similarity. But the definition of similarity, it says triangle ABC, two triangles are similar if they have same angles. But if the angles are not given in the question, we are just given the three sides ABC of this triangle. So you can say that if all the three sides, see in C, this is K times C. If this is B, this is K times B. If this is A, this is K times A. So if all the three sides are in the same proportion, same ratio, we can say that triangles will be similar. Like in this example, this ratio should be fixed. It's fixed. Like this is K, this is K, this is K. They should, they should be the same multiple of the sides of one triangle. Like in this triangle, you can see that if we consider triangle ABC, ABC, what is the ratio of sides AB and DE? AB over DE. AB over DE is 10 over 5. You can see if this 10 is not matching with some uh, proper order like 5, you can look for some other. Like this, this 10 and this is 5. This is 14, 7. You can see that they have similarity in the proportion. So if it is not in the same order, like AB is not exactly in ratio with DE, you can look for some other sides also. But here it is matching with DE. So I am taking AB over DE as 10 by 5 which is 2. Now check for BC and EF. BC and EF which is BC is 12 and EF is 6. So ratio here is 2. Moreover, AC over DF it is 14 by 7 which is also 2. So you can see that sides of triangle ABC and triangle DEF are in the same ratio. So in this case we can say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Always maintain this, the order of the triangle. Right? AB, you, you should see, AB over DE. This way you have to write the ratio. AB, the first two letters of AB, here and here they are DE. You can see, is this ratio correct? Yes, they are proportional. AB and DE are proportional. If we take BC here, we should have EF. So check, BC over EF. They are in proportion? Yes, they are in proportion. Third is AC and this is DF. So AC over DF. Yes, AC and DF are in the same proportion. So this way you have to check the order of the names of the triangles. This is called SSS similarity. Next is, this is the easiest one. This is called AAA similarity. If we simply, we are given two figures in which two angles of a triangle are given, only two angles. 
then it works because the third one automatically becomes equal. Let's say this is 60 degree and this is 80 degree, right? And this is also 60 and this is 80. So these two triangles can be called similar. Why? Because 80 and 60 is 140. The third one becomes 40 automatically in both the triangles. So even if two angles are given, you can say these two triangles are similar. So what is this? Like if I label, let us take this example, A, B, C and D, E, F. In triangle A, B, C and triangle D, E, F. Angle A here is equal to which angle? A is 65, it is equal to D. It may be equal to E, it may be equal to F. Always keep in mind, name are not meant to be written in alphabetical order. They have to kept in the corresponding positions which parts are equal. Here angle B is equal to angle E. And angle C is equal to angle F. So we can write, here order can be anything. But while after proving similarity, they have to be in a particular order. So take which part is equal to angle A? Angle A is equal to angle D. So write D in front of A. B angle is equal to E. B is in the middle. E has to be kept in the middle. C is equal to F. Corresponding to C, the last letter, we have F. This is AA similarity. Right? And the last one is SAS similarity. This is when two two pairs of sides are in the same ratio and the included angle, this is very important, the angle should be including those two sides which are taken for ratio and the included angle is equal, then we can say that SAS is, the SAS similarity can be used there. So like in this example, So, when two sides of one triangle are in proportion to the two sides of another triangle and the included angle angles are equal, then we can say that SAS similarity is satisfied. Like in this example, we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. So, in this, we can see that the ratio of sides, if we see, we are given AB and DE. AB upon DE is a fixed ratio, like 12 over 6, it is 2. Moreover, we have AC over DF. AC over DF, which is 14 over 7, which is also 2. So, these two pairs of sides have the same ratio in these two triangles. And the included angle here is angle A is equal to the included angle here which is angle B. So when the two pairs of sides are proportional as well as the included angles are equal, we can say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle. Now while writing the second triangle, you need to check for the order. Is it DEF or EDF or FED or something else? Now check. Angle A is equivalent to angle D. So if A is here, D has to be kept here. Check for BC. BC is not there. And if you check AC side, AC and DF, right? So if we have these two letters AC in the first triangle, in the second triangle they are EF. And we have already found A is equivalent to D. So that means C is equivalent to F. C is on the last letter. F has to be there. So, E automatically comes here. Right? So, this is how we prove two triangles similar and the most important thing is we have to look for the equal parts. Which part is equal to which part of the second triangle so that we maintain the uniformity in the names of triangles. This was all about the basic of this chapter and uh, we will be doing exercises in the next videos. I hope the basic things are clear to you so that we can apply them in 
solving the questions. I hope you liked watching this video. So please do not forget to subscribe, like and share it with your friends. Thank you.